Which car should I get? Half the rotation Wanna learn more for preparation Of the new season Yeah, motivation is what we burst The new generation It seems Blasafalon is still great Let's see what comes along I can't wait How long the executor is looking safe With all the support that comes this way We also have them top decks Speak around Rashi's art and what's next Maybe some cars that you didn't expect Like Night Queen and Blizzy They do look sick Of course you need some Malamar And Beast Box might be going hard All these changes might just sound bizarre but let's talk about what's in my binder, yeah! Episode 226 Buy list 2019-2020 What's up YouTube, it's Zandos TCG here and welcome to episode 226 on my channel. Uh, as you know, on my channel you always get the latest competitive TCG information in town, so be sure you are subscribed so you don't ever miss out. And also click that little notification bell so you get notified immediately when a new video hits the channel. In this uh, episode, I'd like to welcome you to the buy list of the 2019-2020 season. As you know, on the 15th of August, there's going to be a huge rotation and uh, that's going to be the day before Worlds. I'm also going to the World Championship, so I'm going to have to wait and see how how that turns out but uh, as you can see here these are the sets that will remain and after uh, the rotation takes place that's ultra prism all the way to unified minds uh, this video will not include unified minds because we don't have a full set list yet but i'll definitely do a buy list uh, about the uh, unified minds set as well so you are very uh, well informed to uh, know what you have to get uh, maybe you're gonna buy some packs maybe you buy some singles online this is the time to do it just before the rotation takes place you're gonna know what you still have left in those sets that will be good so just to start things off the rotation uh, as mentioned here that also uh, includes the Sun and Moon promos uh, 94 all the way to the latest ones I'm also not gonna include that in this video this is mainly the main sets on which cards you definitely want to have in your trade binder or in your binder to make decks with okay uh, without further ado let's get this show on the road with Ultra Prism as you can see here, Ultra Prism, there's not a bunch of great cards. You do uh, certain cards that are not mentioned here are uh, things like Glaceon and Leafion. We lose the Energy Evolution EV, and Glaceon uh, also loses Aqua Patch, Double Cars Energy. Leafion has, uh, has never worked in the first place to begin with. And without Energy Evolution EV, let's just scratch that entirely. So we do see here uh, we have a Cherum, which can remove the weakness of your fire, uh, yeah, weakness of your Grass type Pokemon. So uh, if you're having weakness against fire, uh, which is going to be the main thing that Grass type Pokemon are weak against. Maybe you can try out this Cherum. We do still have Netball, so that is great. Some of the Rotoms might also uh, find their way in some certain decks because we have Sightseer, we have Ingo and Emmet, we have uh, even the Sprint of Zubstrika. You can definitely get 9 tool cards in the discard pile and then you can use those attacks for 0 energies. And that's why I still think the Rotoms will uh, definitely have a, a soft spark in your uh, binder because uh, believe it or not, one way or another, one of those Rotoms will find their way in uh, the top decks once again. We have the Shinx line. Uh, I included it here because I uh, don't have have a lot of Ultra Prism shenanigans that you want to be putting into your binder, but the Shinx Luxio Luxury combo seems to be like a great deal because with Disconnect, that attack of Luxio, you can just shut down the opponent's item cards and uh, Shinx can evolve on uh, the very first turn if you go second, so that is a huge thing for Carlos Energy, you can do that. We have Electro Power, so maybe this might show up here and there. Also, uh, the Luxury is uh, uh, capable to use its attacks thanks to the Memory Energy. Uh, as you see uh, on the right side, we also here have uh, another one of those Rodoms. Then on the second line we have Dawnwing is the Crow's my GX. I still think you need one copy of that in your binder. As for the Rodom, put like two or three copies into your binder and a 2-2 Cherim line for the Luxury line. Maybe a 4-4 four, four, uh, tree line. Yeah, that is sufficient. Next up, Lunala Prism Star. Uh, just uh, every Prism Star you just have a one-off. And also I'm just gonna mention this in this video. Every single trainer card and special energy you need the maximum of four copies of because as a little uh, demonstration, sometimes you think, oh, this uh, card is gone. Garbage, and then it comes out of nowhere just being great. That's the same thing that happened with Order Pad. As you mentioned, Andrew Mahone just uh, got, of course, Order Pad going with Pika Rom. So you never know when a trainer might become good. So I definitely suggest you get a, a, a maximum amount of copies uh, of, of course, every single trainer's card, stadium card, as mentioned, uh, item supporter stadium. Every one of those, four off, and uh, as well as the special energies. Now we're going to go back to the Pokemon here. We have Lucario with uh, the ability to get every card that you desire. If you have a Garchomp in play, we might even see that deck if of course uh, we just get a I do think we have a really of 6 HP if not things will be a little bit more difficult because we don't have Nest 
ball. Uh, if Nasbol gets rotated, uh, actually uh, gets reprinted, uh, things is a whole different story because that Lucario Garchomp deck, in theory, it is very clunky, but as soon as it gets rolling, it is still doing uh, some great stuff. Yeah, it's uh, just not need to just have it into your binder. Next up is Ron Pardos. Don't sleep on this card. You can one shot every basic just uh, with three energies and uh, with, of course, that Black Belt. If uh, I'm not mistaken, there's gonna be like a, a tool card for fighting type Pokemon. If you're behind, you need one fighting energy less, and you can just up trade on uh, Tag Team Jaxus because yeah, those are all basic Pokemon. And we also get a neat Stadium card in Unified Minds, which can search our deck for a Pokemon, actually two Pokemon that evolves from Unidentified Fossil and smack them onto the bench, then end your turn. So Rampardos is uh, one of those I would definitely include in your binder. Weevil with Evil Lab Nation, a lot of abilities will see play. Think about the Naganadel ability, the uh, Malamar ability. All of those abilities uh, they will definitely get punished thanks to the Weevil. Definitely put that in. Uh, maybe a uh, tree, tree line of Weevil. Uh, for the Rampardos, I would put four Cranidals and three uh, Rampardos. For the Lucario, I would be putting like four Riolu and uh, two Lucario, maybe even three depending on uh, what you want to put in the deck. But uh, definitely remember that the Elm and uh, the Communication combo is definitely the main key to getting certain of these pieces out. Also, I just want to inform you guys that I also have two other videos all about the rotation. I already made a video on which cards uh, uh, get rotated out, which is very uh, sad to see go. I also made a video about which decks survive. So if you're interested in more post-rotation content, definitely check the links in the description below. Next is Darkrai Prism Star, which is awesome. Awesome. You can smack it down, get two darkness energies in the process from your hand. Why is this gonna be good? Well, because uh, the Nagadadel uh, Greninja Zorak Tag Team GX seems to be very promising uh, after rotation. So, uh, Dark Box with Weave Out to just uh, spread around, actually move around. All your darkness type energies will be good. Weave Out GX comes out and unify mind. So, that's why you need Dark Ripe Prism Star. Magnezone. Just put it in your binder, you never know when Mel will become great again. Magirna uh, is in here for the change close. If you want to swap tool cards, that is the way to do it, or just discard. Actually put the tool card off of your Pokemon because Field Blower will be rotated, so you cannot get rid of your yeah, tool cards equipped. For example, for uh, if you just uh, play Gardevoir, you see, uh, yo, uh, the opponent is playing Picaram, just putting that Lightning Fairy Charm onto it. Oh no, uh, he's starting, he's playing something else. Well, you can just uh, re-equip that with change close, so that's good. Tapu Lele, you might think without counter energy it's useless. Well, that's where you're wrong. We are gonna have, of course, the uh, counter gain in combination with rainbow energy. We'll still make sure that you can have that magical swap, and that's very, very good. We have, of course, the guard job I mentioned with Lucario. Uh, being able to smack 200 with Royal Blaze will be interesting. There's still triple accelerated energy if you want to be using that. Uh, it does get discarded, but uh, uh, here is our good friend Oranguru with resource management. This is going to be a main key factor, and of course, the Sedinja deck with Zipstrika. You definitely need uh, definitely three Orangurus for the Garchomp, maybe three, because there's also a fighting type Garchomp, which I'm going to talk about later. Two Tapu Lele is sufficient, two Magurna is sufficient, and three Magnazone. Then, three copies of Cell Valai GX. You also need some type nulls to go along with that, and uh, the thing here is Gyro Unit gives free retreat to all of your basic Pokemon with triple accelerated energy. You have Turbo Drive and you have Rebel Jack, so Silvalli might be in a good spot now, now that we'll lose things like Boswell Jax, uh, things like Lycanroc Jax, the one from Guardians Rising, so that is the cards from Ultra Prism that I will definitely include in your binder. If I forgot a few, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Moving forward, we're having Forbidden Lights, a little bit less cards that you need to put in your binder. Definitely a Lolan Exeggutor, that's one of my uh, personal favorites because it got me a lot of championship points this season. So uh, a Lolan Exeggutor dishes out more damage with the Tropical Shake attack, depending on how many basic type of, uh, yeah, basic energies you have, different types, uh, as a maximum of five, I think. Uh, yeah, you can just dish out a huge amount of damage with a Lolan Exeggutor. There's also Greninja GX with the uh, Shuriken Flurry. Uh, you need some, um, Frogadiers to go along with that and some Frokies. This might be amazing to snipe around because as mentioned, Guzma's rotated, Gusting is a little bit more difficult. Maybe you compare it with, of course, the Volcanion here with uh, the Photom Geyser or whatever. That's not Photom Geyser, yeah, Jet Geyser. To just uh, get rid of the opponent's active and then they just uh, select one of their bench Pokemon. Pretty much like a Repel or a one-sided Escape Board. No, Escape Rope, yeah, that's the one. Uh, other than that, the attack is very uh, insane to power up. Tree Water type energies, that means Aqua Patch is gone, it's gonna be difficult, but Greninja GX it's definitely going to be great, uh, Volcanion Prism Star as well, so those are the only two water types I would include from Forbidden Lights. Uh, next up is going to be Magnazone. Magnazone is going to be the Lightning variant, if Lightning ever needs a ton of acceleration, uh, you never know when it, it might happen. Next is another Rodom, 120 if you're having uh, yeah, all the energies in the discard pile, actually all the tool cards in the discard pile, nine of them, you can just use it attack for free, so maybe Rodom will show up. And then Malamar! 
huge key factor here uh, let's go uh, returning into ultra prism huge key factor here there was none of them in there but the huge key factor here in forbidden light you need malamar if you don't have a four four line malamar you cannot go uh, to the post rotation you need that in your binder it's going to be fantastic and still very good with psychic recharge being able to pair with ultra necrozma with the new kiratina and garchomp uh tag team jacks Melamore is good, definitely put it in your binder. Next is Naganadel GX. This is the one with Stinger GX, also came as a box topper promo and elite trainer box of the Dragon Majesty set. If you don't have one, you can also uh, get it through that method. Uh, with Beast Raid, 20 damage for every one of your uh, Ultra Beasts in play. Not only is this going to become big better, it keeps its mysterious treasure, it keeps ultra space, and it gets a new Naganadel Jax, which can draw a card. So everything the Beast Box deck ever wanted is going to be put into this. Uh, so Naganadel Jax, you need two copies or at least three copies uh, for the for the rest of that because uh, there's going to be a new Naganadel, so you can maybe play a two-two line or a three-one line depending on your uh, yeah playstyle. There's also Guard Jump, the fighting type. Maybe put two or three copies in your binder as well. You never know when it might become good. Zygarde Jax is going to be good uh, because of there's going to be a Zygarde and Unified Minds dishing out, actually powering up every Zygarde and Zygarde GX's attack by 20. So if you have like four of those 10% uh, Zygarde's on your field, this is going to be crazy damage output. That's an extra 80 damage. Talking about damage buff, Diancy Prism Star. If you're, you're obligated to have that, very great for every fighting type. And then it's Boswell. Yeah, Baby Boswell. You don't have to say Baby Boswell anymore because uh, Boswell Jax is rotated. So this Boswell will stay around, will one-shot Pika Rams and uh, maybe Persian Jax's for, uh, for lunch. So it's going to be fantastic. Boswell Sledgehammer. Evelto is something I put in here. Maybe a one-off. Maybe play that. Here is why. Because of the Doom Count GX. Sometimes if you're playing a deck that spreads around a little bit of damage, you can play a one copy of Evelto GX for a single Rainbow Energy or Darkness Energy. You can just knock something out if it has exactly four damage counters already. So that could be amazing to uptrade against Tag Team GXs. I also put Goslord in here. Why is that? Uh, because of the Weavile GX that can move around all your Darkness type energies. Maybe you can play Goslord and a bunch of B-Strings to get a lot of Darkness uh, energies into play. So uh, the Greninja and Zora Tag Team GX can punch up for a lot. Lot of damage next ultra necros about two copies that's what you need uh, for the guzzlord uh two or three copies maybe uh baby buzzwell four copies and uh yeah that's that zygar jacks three copies okay ultra necros but only two copies you only need to it's searchable with mysterious treasure it is doing the same stuff it did before the rotation that means you can just use malamar to power it up and just destroy tag teams or use that sky scorching light gx at certain points to just get rid of things like Lost March, for example. Arceus Prism Star, uh, it's gonna be nice to just test that out to get energy acceleration at certain Pokemon. Definitely put one in your binder. Okay, Celestial Storm, the set with Dragon type Pokemon uh, got rampant. We are gonna put once, uh, one or two Septal into our binder because of the power of nature ability preventing uh, damage done to our grass types by Ultra Beast. We're gonna put three, three line of Macargo in our uh, binder because of the smooth over ability. We've seen it uh, have success with things like Gramble, but we're definitely gonna see it more. Also, it's Zoroark back in the days, but uh, that ability is just way too good not to abuse. We're gonna have Swampert. Definitely put four Swampert in your list. So uh, a four, two, four line of Swampert. There's a. Mudcaps with 70 HP and there's Mudcap with uh, 60 HP. I put both of them in. You never know when things get reprinted like a Dive Ball for exa example or maybe Nest Ball. The thing here with 60 HP you can abuse Professor Alms Lecture. Next up is Sneasel, just for the Professor Alms Lecture I mentioned here, 60 HP. And uh, then we have an Ultra Beast, Salasila. Single Metal or Rainbow Energy, you can dish out a lot of damage, even with Beast Energy. But uh, you have to have like the total remaining prize cards between both players needs to be 6 in total. Next, a Stack Attacker. You need that in your Beast Box deck. And uh, since Beast Box is gonna be so good after rotation, definitely get yourself 4 Stack Attacker. Salamence, this might be a weird choice here, but definitely put one copy into your binder because uh, with uh, the Lance Prism Star you can get it out and that's uh, another way to gust around. Next is Latias Prism Star. With the Dreamy Mist you can just uh, get energies onto your uh, field very quickly. It goes very well with uh, Rayquaza. We lose Vikavolt so maybe Rayquaza. There's also Rayquaza in here. Rayquaza with the Stormy Winds getting energies uh, from the discard pile. Dragon Break dealing more damage depending on how many energies we have. So with Latias to accelerate more energies is going to be fantastic. So also Latios Prism Star goes hand in hand with Evolution type, Dragon type Pokemon. So if you're using something like a Lance Prism Star, Latios will be your main guy. You will also want to be testing out. Although Double Cars energy is rotated, so think about that. Next is Dunsparce. Yeah, Dunsparce is going to help all your Pokemon out that have like more than 60 HP. With a sec Strike and Run, 
search your deck for three basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench. And you can even shuffle this Pokemon to one of the bench Pokemon. So that is insane. So Dunsparce, it uh, did show uh, uh, playing at the uh, early 2000s at, World, at Worlds. But now it might uh, see it play once again because uh, we lose our crucial Nesball Ultra Ball engine. So maybe Dunsparce, it's finally time. Four off. And uh, for the rest, the Prism Stars, one off, of course. And then four Rayquaza GXs. Okay. Next is Slacking, the only reliable way to shut down abilities, although there is Glaceon, it is uh, not gonna be good, Glaceon. Slacking shuts down abilities and uh, with the triple accelerated energy it's actually good. I suggest you run like a 4... yeah, 403. Yeah, we have rare candies, we have a Green's Exploration to get it out as quickly as possible. This is gonna be the main way shutting down abilities. Malamar, Psychic Transfer, forget about it. Uh, the Nagamadal with the Recharge. Forget about it, or actually, how is it called? Let's just uh, skip back. Yeah, uh, the uh, Nagadadel, of course, getting energies from the Discard Pile blocked. All the abilities blocked, Rayquaza blocked, Ultra Wall blocked. So, Lazy is definitely gonna be an ability, and maybe you can pair it in the Meganium deck with Nido Queen as a 1 0 1 off. Moving forward, Dragon Majesty. There's not a lot of cards in that mini set, but uh, there are some noteworthy cards you definitely want in your binder. Victini Prism Star, Saland with 60 HP and the Call for Family Attack. Definitely in your Salazzle Unknown Hand deck. Gonna be very great to be using that copy. Quagsire, uh, Nagadal Quagsire is a little bit uh, losing its edge thanks to uh, Wishful Baton being uh, rotated out, Aqua Patch being rotated out, but still Quagsire might become good again, so definitely hang on to those. Dragonite GX is gonna be nice, uh, maybe we can use that uh, Dragon Porter GX attack uh, with Mew and Mewtwo Tag Team GX, so put that in the Descar pile with uh, yeah, maybe some Malamars, you can be using that and get some dragons on the field, who knows? Altaria. Damage buff with your dragons, maybe that's good to see play in the, the near future. Altaria GX is gonna be nice because it cannot get hit by GX without Bright Tone Attack and Turtonator. It's great with Nagna Dell, so definitely put it in your binder. For the copies, I would run like uh, one Victini Prism Star, four Salanded, uh, three Quagsire, three Dragonite GX, uh, or maybe two. Now let's lower that to two Dragonite GX, four Altaria, three Altaria GX. Four Turtonator and then uh, maybe uh, I'm just gonna say three Drompa because we do have uh, the Mysterious Treasure and this can also accelerate energy to your Dragon type Pokemon while also dealing a little bit of damage. Lost Thunder, that's a lot. That was one of the most uh, fantastic sets we've had in a long while. Meganium with the quick ripening herb, four copies of that. There's also a mix between 60 HP Chikoritas and uh, 70 HP Chikoritas. Both of them are great in their own way. We have Netball to search them out, or you can use the Elm Engine, depending on your playstyle. We have Jumpliff, you need that, as well as Strumbeak and Natu, they're all on the screen right here. Because uh, that's gonna be the Lost March deck, maybe it gets better after rotation, because uh, a lot of spread decks get uh, violated. Coco, uh, yeah, the Tapu Coco, uh, Sun and Moon promo, Flying Flip gets rotated out, so maybe. This guy uh, will, this deck will see a little bit more play. It upgrades against tag teams. There's also Groval with the Sunshine Graze ability, being able to search out a uh, grass type every single turn. So powerful. We've seen it work before and a little Exeggutor. So definitely hang on to those. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, four copies of Groval. They're not cheap. Uh, or actually, they're not expensive at all. But then the Shaman with an ability to heal 20 damage of your active grass type. Definitely get four copies of that as well. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but there's gonna be Blasaphalon GX, four copies, still great. Although Tapu Fini as a hard counter is coming out, there's not a reliable way to search out a basic a water type Pokemon unless they run communication. But still, they are uh, not gonna be running Rescue Stretcher and stuff, so Blasaphalon Nagadal is gonna be one of the top tier decks. Not only that, Blasaphalon GX is also in the baby Blasaphalon deck, so there's that. Three copies of Slowking, at yeah, two copies at least. Maybe three if you're just gonna go crazy. With Psychic and the Triple Accelerator Energy, you'll be able to one-shot Charizards, and that's uh, a dream, right? Next is Substrika with Sprint, four copies. You need that because it's uh, gonna be a draw engine in a lot of decks. Zero Aura, two copies. Uh, the Picaron deck will still be able to uh, abuse Zero Aura. Not only that, maybe some uh, certain Pokemon uh, trainers will use, of course, Zapdos and Zero Aura as the way to just retreat every single turn because Guzma is rotated. Then, Unknown Hand, there's also Unknown Damage and uh, something else here, Unknown Lost. Maybe get two Unknowns, uh, yeah, for, for each Unknown, get two copies, there's that. Wobbuffet, one copy for its ability, the Sha... I don't know what the ability is called, but uh, it blocks Prism Stars from attacking and uh, the abilities they can use. So, uh, it blocks the Ditto Prism Star, which is also on here. Uh, Shedinja, 
the Vessel of Life uh, ability will make sure that you can just your opponent will not be able to take prize cards as a deck on its own. It can be paired with a lot of things. We have Netball, we have Treasure. Shedinja will be there to stay. I think four copies is gonna be good. Maybe even, yeah, lower that down to three copies at least. Two Giratina, because Giratina can get itself back with the Distortion Door ability from the discard pile. So you need at least two Giratina. It's gonna be a main part of the Malamar deck, but uh, will also be kind of like its own personal way to just abuse spell attack and all that stuff. Nigaligo, you of course know him with that attack for one energy. Uh, Ultra Beast, uh, that you can just copy if the opponent has exactly two prize cards remaining. There's Naganadel uh, with the ability to just uh, the charge up ability to getting energies from the discard pile back. It's gonna be main part of a Naganadel Zoroark Greninja tag team. It's gonna be part of the Blastophalon Naganadel. Naganadel is gonna be very great. Definitely get four copies of that. One copy of Onyx, maybe even two. It's gonna be an easy way for you against uh, things like uh, the Picaron. Not only is it great in Malamar versions, it's also great in like Quagmack if it somehow survives. It's gonna be great. Next is gonna be a little Nine Tails Jax with Mysterious Guidance. We've seen this work in a couple of Stage Two decks to just get that rare candy. Although Green Exploration is a, a way to do it, also a little Nine Tails is one of uh, the more powerful abilities in the game. Uh, Grand Bull all out. I wonder if this deck will survive without Oranguru. There's gonna be maybe a build with uh, three, uh, four Reds challenge. So. Get yourself four Grand Bull, you never know. Maybe people will also try and run like a four ounce lecture with that 60 HP snubble and then you know, use four Reds uh, challenge to just uh, maybe do something. Maybe with Viridian Forest to even discard uh, your entire hand. It's gonna be fantastic. Xerneas Prism Star, one copy of that. Then two copies of the Tapu Lele with the Charm Charm ability for, of course, the combo with Magirna and uh, the Whimsica GX, making the opponent confused as well as uh, that annoy ability of um, uh, the Whimsica GX will be kind of a, a nice deck in my opinion. Next is Blizzy, powerful slap, triple accelerated energy, and you dish out a lot of damage. Flip a lot of coins. I know Victini, the Fliptini is rotating, but don't care about that. We are still gonna rock some solid damage with a, like a Welder and a Triple Accelerated Energy that is like five energies in total. And I, I'm not even talking about uh, the ways that you can just up that damage output if you survive a hit, because Fighting Weakness is also gonna be better after rotation. Then Ditto Prism Star, every stage one deck will definitely rely on Ditto to just have your fifth basic or just evolve into anything you please as tech cards, stage one tech cards. We've seen it before with Stefan Ivanov with the Nagonadal GX and the Stinger GX he used in his Zoroark Dugon list. Fantastic. Then uh, Trumbeak, four copies of that as well, so for the Lost March deck. That is a uh, Lost Thunder for you, so that was uh, kind of a mouthful. Moving forward, we're gonna have Team Up. Team Up, the, the set that introduced tag teams, and uh, yeah, this is gonna be not, not a lot of tag teams you need. The ones you need from this set is that uh, Picaram. You need two or three copies of that, and then two uh, copies of Eevee and Snorlax for the tag teams. Other than that, maybe try out Beedrill if you're interested in rogue decks, because uh, it can uh, yeah, knock itself out while also knocking out the opponent and uh, against tag teams, that's fantastic. We still have Netball, we still have uh, Communication, we have Elm, so it's very easy to get that out. Next up is uh, the Charizard uh, with the Roaring Resolve ability, getting able, being able to get two fire engines from the deck immediately with Welder and the Manual Attachment. We'll make sure that this Charizard can just uh, pack some serious amount of damage. So I do see uh, some success for that as well. So maybe we'll get four Charizards, four Beedrill, then a 2-2 line of the Nine Tails because uh, that will be a reliable way to just gust as, as a fire deck. You can just, of course, uh, get two fire engines in the discard and just target whatever you please. So very strong in fire decks. We already talked about Picaron. Next is Zapdos. Zapdos is gonna be maybe a lower amount, maybe two copies because uh, the uh, Guzma is gone and it's not gonna be an archetype of its own, but it's gonna, definitely gonna be one of those uh, cards that you definitely put in a lightning type deck just as, oh, the opponent has a 6 HP or uh, yeah, an 80 HP Pokemon on the active position. Maybe you can just do switch and bam, it's out of there. So that's why we were still getting two Zapdos. We're gonna be running four of uh, the uh, Blitzel that you just want to put in your binder of 60 HP just for the Alm combo. Emolga is gonna be great because it can get Nuzzly Gathering, whatever you can get, just get uh, a Pokemon with Nuzzle and uh, that Pokemon will be Emolga. So you can just get Emolga with Emolga and then you can use Communication every single turn to get whatever you please. Tapu Koko Prism Star, the best Lightning uh, Pokemon in the format, just get every Lightning deck runs this. Gengar and Mimikyu, get four copies of that because I do have some hope for this deck. This archetype will become better with the rotation of Zoroark. 
and uh, yeah, item lock is definitely gonna be a huge deal. A lot of uh, those new decks will new use a lot of bench space. Think about uh, Blacephalon, Nagadadel, uh, there's also gonna be Malamar variants. Every one of those Pokemon just fills up their bench completely. It's not that great against tag teams uh, that just run the Green's Exploration Engine with just a, a quad build, but other than that, it's just already a great uh, deck on its own. Next is gonna be Nido Queen. Uh, four copies of that as well because of the Queen's Call. You can just use Magirna, uh, not Magirna, Meganium and Swampert to just get this deck rolling. It's already saw a little bit of success, maybe at the Singapore special event as well. As mentioned, Omastar, three copies or maybe even four for the Gengar deck, Gengar Omastar. Then uh, two or three copies of Lycanroc GX, that uh, GX move can become quite powerful if there's a lot of uh, energies in the opponent's discard pile. Then uh, one copy of Absol with the Dark Ambition, you can just uh, uh, yeah, up the uh, retreat cost of the opponent's basic Pokemon by one. And that's gonna mean that the opponent can no longer rely on a skateboard to retreat their Jirachi. He's talking about Jirachi, you need four copies of that. Uh, because of the Stellar Rage is just one of the best abilities in the game right now. Two copies of Incineroar to uh, put them uh, carefully in the discard pile so you can abuse that GX move of uh, Greninja and uh, Zorak Tag Team GX. Easy search ball with Cherry's Ball which will be getting a unified match. Just put that card in the discard and get two of them at out at the same time thanks to that amazing GX move of uh, the Greninja and Zorak Tag Team GX. So that's why you need two copies of that. Three copies of the Dragon Alone Executor. Not only is it searchable with Mysterious Treasure, it is also uh, able to dish out more damage than you want thanks to the Altaria of Dragon Majesty. Think about it. So uh, there's that. Then uh, two copies of Eevee Snorlax, I mentioned that. And then three copies of Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl is definitely great. It's already great with triple accelerated energy, but with, of course, the new Stadium card, you can get two Aerodactyls out at once. That makes your uh, life a little bit more easier. So yeah, I do have a hu huge hope for Aerodactyl. 180 for a single attachment is just way too good to pass up. Then, Detective Pikachu, only one card, in my opinion, that's the Ditto that can copy anything. Sometimes you use a uh, attachment and welder and you can just copy whatever you want. Sometimes that Ditto can uh, impact some serious amount of damage as a one price attacker. Then, for the Unbroken Bonds, it's gonna be uh, Feramosa and uh, the Boswell Tag Team Jax, one copy. If you want to be making that quad build, four copies, but I uh, don't recommend it because fire is still very prominent. There's also uh, Cartana in here, Ultra Beast, Slice uh, of uh, the cutoff attack for uh, 130 damage if uh, you have exactly four prize cards left. Then Charizard and Reshram, yeah, I'm gonna say two copies, two copies as a bare minimum because you can also pair with Eevee Snorlax and stuff, but this card is insane and I actually saw a huge amount of results ever since its release. Then a tree tree line of Arcanine, it, uh, typically only uh, saw play thanks to the Vileplume being, uh, yeah, being played, but it's also great. Arcanine and Turtonator, I've seen it work uh, because Arcanine can put energies in play and then Turtonator can just put him in the discard to have some huge damage output. Volcanion Energy Acceleration while also dealing 110 damage, that's also great. Four copies of that. Four copies of Baby Blacephalon, the Circus, uh, Fireball Circus, yeah, that's the attack can uh, have unlimited damage output as a one price attacker. In the past, it was very fragile to things like Marshadow, but with that being gone, I think Baby Lacephalon might be able to just rock up some uh, unexpected wins. Not only that, uh, I do think that uh, Wishful Baton hurts it a little bit, but you can add in the uh, Beast Rings instead. Salazzo, that's gonna be the star of uh, the consistency after rotation, so every fire deck might be running to that because Tapu Lele is gone. The Denny Jax is also kind of an option here. There's uh, the Denny Jax on the screen right now. You need two Dedenne GX in your deck thanks to Cherry's Ball, it's gonna be very great. Maybe every GX based deck will run four Cherry's Ball and you can just search out your Dedenne at the correct time. For Salazzo 4-4 four, four line, you could be running that Salazzo hand deck or you could be uh, using that Salazzo in a er fire deck. So it all depends on what you're gonna be making, but definitely four Salazzo. Three copies of Dugong with, of course, that attack that snaps uh, yeah, 60 on two of the opponent's Pokemon can set up multiple KOs at the same time. Maybe you can have some crazy stuff going on. Not only that, you hit for weakness against fire types. That's always always a great thing. Vika Volt and Charger Buck. You need four copies of each. Charger Buck is like the battery ability that equips onto Vika Volt for uh, two. As a, yeah, it is going to be two lightning energies at the same time thanks to that ability of Charger Buck. And Vika Volt can dish out 220 damage if you discard all energies attached to it. With Electro Power, you use two Electro Powers and you one shot anything in the game. So uh, that's why it's still an underrated rogue deck. Weezing. Weezing! Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of uh, debate about if, is, if Weezing is still viable after rotation. In my opinion, definitely. Just play Fire Energies, play Welder, and also uh, Triple Accelerator Energy, and you'll be doing fine. You could be running Fire Attacks in your deck now because you're running Welder, 
Weezing with a Detention Gas and Shrine is still a viable combo in my opinion, even though Double Cards and GH rotated four copies of that, a 4 4 line of Weezing, a 2 2 line of Ms. Magus, there's Dust Stone to evolve into it, and you can just knock it out, draw cards until you have 7. This is mainly used in the decks that run only tag teams as their main attacker, so as a quad based deck, Ms. Magus could help out with uh, the consistency. Not only that, uh, with a Green's Exploration, you search out your. Yeah, uh, Dust Stone, that's it. Mew to just block off the damage done to you on the bench. Things like Jolteon with, of course, the attack, 30 on the attack, 30 on the bench. For example, you just block off your uh, damage output on the bench. That means that uh, Picaron will no longer uh, be able to use Tag Bull GX for its full advantage, so that's awesome. There's Marshadow to be able to discard Stadium cards. There's no longer Field Blower, which you can rely on, and sometimes Marshadow can just discard the Stadium uh, that is uh, currently in play. Marsh Shadow and Machamp Tag Team Jacks because of course that fighting belt or whatever it is you can equip it onto it and then you can just attack for a card's energy so it, now it becomes splashable as a fighting tag pick around there better be afraid if it's still good. Green John Zorak Tag Team Jacks talked about it before with Nagnadel it's gonna be a top tier archetype so three copies of that definitely gonna be needing that with a dark pulse attack they should have more damage depending on how many darkness energies we have in play as mentioned Mew one copy Marsh Shadow one copy Marsh Shadow uh, and Machamp GX one copy and then three copies of Green Ninja and Zoroark. Then three copies of Hunchcrow. Hunchcrow with a Ruler of Night ability is definitely gonna be uh, viable at some point. It already saw play at the 8th uh, place winning list of the North American Internationals just to wall out against decks that only rely on special energy. So if uh, a special energy deck comes your path, Hunchcrow is the way to just stall them out. Not only that, Unfair GX might also be a little bit unfair if we have some cards to pair it with. Uh, although double cards and just rotated, triple star energy will just work fine. Then Spirit Tomb with Build and Spite. We saw it work with Zapdos, we saw it work with Stunfist, so this deck, uh, yeah, this card actually can dish out a lot of damage as a maximum of 160 damage thanks to the Anguish Cry. So uh, every single turn it gets a damage counter if you activate the ability and then uh, the more damage counters it has, the more damage it does. Then Lucario and Mel Metal is in here for the defensive way uh, because of that uh, GX move that just uh, sustains yeah, all of your metal types take 30 less damage for the rest of the game and uh, without choice ban there's gonna be a huge uh, yeah, advantage to doing that attack so that's why you need two copies of that. Gardevoir and Sylveon Tag Team Jacks, three or four copies because uh, I do think this uh, might become nice. I've seen it before with the hats with like Morgan and all that stuff to just get a ton of energies onto there so you can use of course your uh, GX move uh, as early as possible so the opponent breaks so still a very very awesome card. With Whimsicott Jax, I think it's gonna be fantastic. Maybe play with Porygon Z, also mentioned in this uh, slide of the video. LLR, or just play with that uh, Tapu Lele and Magurna combo. So Fluffy Cotton will make sure that you just stay alive turn after turn if you flip heads. Very annoying for the opponent. And the energy blow damage output is infinite if you get more energies onto it. Also, Toy Box GX will become uh, very much better because the opponent can no longer spam Marshadow. So there's that. Then there's Persian Jack, Catwalk is amazing, and Triple Salarate Energy with Vengeance is also amazing, so uh, there's still hope for that. Get two copies of that in your binder, and then three copies of Porygon Z. And that is everything for the buy list for now, so definitely get all those uh, things noted down, get them all in your binder, and you'll be able to make the most powerful decks in existence. Anyhow, this was Zapdos TCG. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to demolish the like button. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed it, I'll definitely let me know uh, if I should make more videos like this. That way, I'm being more motivated than ever before. I'll uh, also be practicing for World, so I'm also going to be making post-rotation deck lists soon. So for now, just get your buy list, get all your cards together, and we'll be talking to each other very shortly. Anyhow, have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will be seeing you guys in the next one. Peace. If you wanna go and test the deck that isn't played a lot in this format, then listen to what I'll say. If you wanna go and try it out with me, let me know how it does in a tournament. I think it could be really great. Chilling on Sundays, while new ideas pop in my brain. Where